Hello Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Bosk's Bounty video. Welcome to episode 57 of Ask Bosk's Bounty. This is of course the series where I answer your questions. So if you do have a question for next week's episode, please leave it in the comment section below. And if you do happen to enjoy this video, don't forget to drop a like down below because that also does help the video and the channel. We've got loads and loads going on in this week's episode of Ask Boss Bounty, including obviously the questions, but we also have the giveaway winner to announce later on in the video. I did also want to extend a thank you and a welcome to Daniel Boswell and John Charlton, who are my latest people to sign up to Patreon to support me on there. So thank you very much for that. We only need four more on Patreon and we'll be doing another exclusive giveaway because I'll be hitting about 25 supporters, which is awesome. Now, if you want to support this channel in another way, which won't cost you a penny, there is a link to my Amazon storefront in the description below. And when you do your Christmas shopping, just click that link beforehand. It won't cost you anything extra on Amazon. It literally just gives me a very, very small percentage. And that'll be a very nice Christmas present. So thank you very much if you would do that for me. That'd be awesome. And for those of you who haven't seen, I did do my room tour video that dropped on the channel yesterday. So if you haven't watched that video, I will leave a link to that one in the description below as well. So you can check out my room tour video. Now, I would also like to say that this episode of Ask Boss Bounty does contain spoilers for the most recent Mandalorian episode. So if you haven't watched that episode of The Mandalorian yet, make sure you click away and come back when you have. And with all that being said, let's get on to the first question. All right, let's not waste any more time and get on to the main topic of this video. And it is, of course, the Razor Crest. And it's been going a bit mad over the weekend on social media. I've had been bombarded with questions, both on Twitter, Instagram, and of course on my YouTube videos and in the questions from last week's episode. So I'm just gonna bung up a few of those questions on the screen now so you can see the sorts of things that are being asked. and. We'll pick out Jamie Brewers here. He says, Tim, how do you feel about the Razor Crest being destroyed in the last episode of The Mandalorian? Well, I can honestly say that I honestly think it's just a bit of a big hoo-ha. Essentially, when it happened in the show, I, you know, my immediate thoughts weren't on, you know, that I've backed this 350 pound toy and the ship that it represents is now no more. That did not cross my mind at that point. I was more concerned about the situation the Mandalorian was in, the fact that he's lost the child and he's lost his ride essentially and how he's gonna get out of that situation. Of course, once the episode had finished, I did sort of have a little chuckle to myself that they'd actually gone and done it. We did see in the trailers for the season two that the Razor Crest was in a bad way. And at that point, I honestly thought that it could quite possibly be destroyed in, in season two. And they've gone and done it. But who knows, he might get another one. But as far as the toys go, I don't think it makes a blind bit of difference to me whatsoever. I mean, if that was the case, then, you know, I wouldn't have wanted, for example, a Darth Vader's TIE Fighter when I was a kid. It, it was in a film for about five minutes and we never saw it again, but I still wanted the toy. You know, when they announced the sail barge, that was destroyed in Return of the Jedi after about 10 minutes on screen. I still wanted it as a toy. The Razor Crest has been in 14 episodes of The Mandalorian so far. It's probably had more screen time than the majority of other ships in the whole Star Wars universe. Those episodes aren't going anywhere. They're going to be they're going to be there for you to watch and enjoy. Um, of course, he may not have the Razor Crest from now on, but it doesn't it just doesn't matter, do you know what I mean? It's it's hard to describe, but it just doesn't affect my thinking whatsoever. I still cannot wait for the HasLab Razor Crest. It's gonna be an amazing collector's piece and it's gonna look amazing in people's collections. So there is nothing really else to say on the matter. Frank Tetty says, question for next week. Do you think with the coming anniversary of Return of the Jedi that Hasbro will re-release a new version of Master Yoda on a Return of the Jedi card? If so, do you think it will affect the price of the very limited Canadian only release from 2010? Love to know your thoughts. Right, so I no, in short, I don't think it will affect the value. This is the Canadian Yoda here. Of course, I like I love showing it off in my videos. It's going to be going off to grading very, very soon. But um, I don't think it'll affect the value of this one because this one is so rare, essentially. There aren't many produced of this. And it's not the Return of the Jedi Yoda. Of course, they've used the card back. But essentially, that's the Revenge of the Sith Yoda. So I can't see this one being affected in any, any way. 
Now, of course, this one here is the same image that they've used uh, for the Empire Strikes Back. Now, of course, that is an Empire Strikes Back image, and so is that, which is why the Canadian Yoda is so great. It's a Revenge of the Sith Yoda, Return of the Jedi logo, but Empire Strikes Back lo uh, image, which is just bizarre, isn't it? This one is the uh, original trilogy collection, and again, it's it's used the Empire Strikes Back image and the Empire Strikes Back logo. And now, of course, this back in the vintage days carried on being used for the Return of the Jedi. But they did release an alternative image for Yoda. And I think it'd be nice if they were to do a re-release or a new updated Yoda for the Return of the Jedi that they use the alt card, the alternative image. That'd be nice. But I think at the end of the day, if they were to bring out a new Yoda, then the only one that would be affected price wise is probably this one. But this one's already dirt cheap anyway. You can pick that one up for, I don't know, $15, $20 perhaps. Landon Sander says, would you like to see a Boba Fett from Mando season two in the vintage collection? Any version like in his armor or no bad? Man, of course, 100% yes. We're obviously getting the Return of the Jedi version, which is gonna be the definitive Boba Fett. But of course he doesn't look like that anymore. And from the Mandalorian season two, I would love to see two Boba Fett's or maybe like a deluxe Boba Fett where you get him in his nomad outfit and then maybe the armor pieces to sort of change him up that would be awesome so two figures or one figure with the extra bits I do, don't really mind but I do think we need that new Boba Fett from Mandalorian season two. Rennie's review says question for next week have you ever broken a figure and if so what do you do with it? Um, I personally haven't really broken a figure apart from when I was you know younger and I used to just smash them up and whatever but my son he's seven he breaks figures all the time this is his version of that boss and look at him he's in a bad way he's lost his thing around his neck and his legs come off so I think I've glued that once before for him so I've got to glue that back for him obviously he's not going to be able to move it but yeah just super glue basically is hard fix that Emerson Alder says hi BB always love tuning in to your Sunday Q&A's thank you Emerson I'm going for a hat trick as you've graciously answered my last two questions. I love Dengar after receiving him free back in the day of a mail away. If I were to buy a modern equivalent, which would you recommend? So Dengar is actually the only mail away figure that I did as a kid, essentially the Palatoy Dengar. I remember it turned up like, I don't know, about a year later and I completely forgot that we actually sent off for it. But uh, that's by the by. This is the definitive Dengar, it's the Vintage Collection VCO1 and you're not gonna get any better than that. It's a really, really good figure. And yeah, that's all you need for a modern equivalent. Darkon633 says, hello again, love a lot of the questions that you have been receiving. I do have a question this week. Seeing as more of the Macquarie designed vehicles, creatures have been making their way into canon Star Wars lore, what is your favorite Ralph Macquarie designed vehicle and what would you like to see possibly in the vintage collection if Hasbro had the chance to do one? Yeah, I love the Macquarie concept art. I think it's great. And I do love the way that uh, Lucasfilm have been using some of that. So, for example, Zeb, he is the uh, Macquarie Chewbacca, essentially. And they've used that design for Zeb, which I think was awesome. In terms of vehicles, um, I loved the snow speeders from the Battle of Hoth. They look really, really cool. Um, not sure if they'll get away with doing that in the modern vintage collection. You know, I, I think that the eventual design that they went with for the snow speed is a better design, but I do love those. And of course, then there's the X-Wing, which they kind of have used for Poe's X-Wing and stuff with the different engines. And essentially, you know, we could really do with like a blue leader version, one of those. So that would be pretty awesome if they could do that. Marky D 1967 says, question for Ask Boss Bounty. Has there been a 3.75 inch scale Sarlacc pit from the Return of the Jedi sale bar skiff scene? If not, do you think it's possible for Hasbro to do something like that? I know it would be more like another diorama piece, but think how awesome it would go with the recent barge and skiff vehicles. Absolutely it would. I'm pretty sure they did one in the Legacy collection and I think it was called something like uh, battle above the battle at the Sarlacc pit or something like that and you essentially got a skiff a few figures and the Sarlacc pit now unfortunately it was the Sarlacc pit that was based on the special edition film so it had that silly B 
beak thing which looked like something out of the little shop of horrors you know i preferred the original sarlacc pit i'm just saying i'm old school so but they did do that and it goes for a lot of money on the secondary market these days so yep 100 percent it'd be awesome if they could redo something like that for us in the vintage collection so we've got a couple of questions here that are on the same theme and the first one's from andrew carver and he says question for the next week do you think hasbro will re-release all of the skiff guards because i want them but they are too expensive and Denny Kinger says, Hi, Boss Bounty. I noticed you have both week aways carded, but they are missing from your skiff. Are you frustrated about this? So essentially, yes, I am. I would love the two week aways loose, but they are just far too expensive for me to buy those loose or carded to open. Uh, they go for far too much money. So in answer to the other question, I, I don't think that Hasbro will revisit the skiff guards anytime soon, personally. Maybe when the Return of the Jedi comes back round for the anniversary, but I, I don't think in 2021 we're going to see any more skiff guards, which is a bit of a shame because, you know, when they're looking at these reissue waves and they give us Padme and Anakin in his peasant disguise, and then you look at figures like Grievous and the two weak ways and things like that, you really wonder what they're doing, don't you? Brian Dempsey says, Hey, Bosk, love the channel. Keep up the great work. My son and I have recently started collecting vintage Kenner figures and are really enjoying them. How many mock vintage figures do you have in your collection and which is your favourite? So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I did do my room tour video yesterday. So, uh, you know, feel free to take a look at that. We'll see all my vintage mocks in there. But if I just have a quick count of them now, I have about 22 vintage mocks uh, mint on cards. Very, very difficult for me to pick a favourite. Um, I've got a couple which really stand out for me for different reasons. So for example, my Palatoy Attack Commander is one of my favorites because it's a Palatoy card. It's in amazing condition. It looks brand new. Then you've got R5D4 just because it's a classic Star Wars card and it's, 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 a, it's got the Star Wars chase and it's my only one that's from the Star Wars line of figures. So the, uh, the really early figures. Of course, I've got Bosk. And then I've got my alternative Im image cards, which is a, like a mini focus for me. And I love those, the Leia, the Chewie, the Vader, love those. But this one that I recently got here, I mean, wow. Look at look at the condition that's in. That's that's in mint condition. It's gonna go off for grading. Um, the only thing wrong with that is the weapons come loose, but they often do. It's just, you know, the snow trooper or the Hoth trooper, whatever you wanna call him. Phenomenal card back, look at it. It's just a classic. The Empire Strikes Back logo. I can't tell you how much I love this thing. And uh, But would I be able to say it's my favourite? Probably not. I've just got too, too many that I love so much, you know. Zach Krim says, thank you for sharing your knowledge. I've been binging your videos the last few weeks and I've learned a lot. Thank you very much, Zach. Question for next week. At what point during the production distribution process are cards punched? I began collecting when the vintage collection came back a few years ago and have purchased figures from many different retailers, including direct from Hasbro, but they're all punched. The only unpunched figures in my collection are from eBay. Yep, so essentially since the vintage, when the vintage collection came back, all of the figures are punched. And I think it's got something to do with retailers not wanting the little hanger tabs all over the floor. So it used to be that they used to get the figures out of the cases, put them on the little hooks, which punched the cards and the little tag or tab would fall on the floor and make a mess. So so for the new vintage collection figures, they get punched at the factory or are they do they even have the hanger tab in there in the first place? You know, it might just be a design thing that they have there now for the, so that they can hang on the shelves. Maybe that little bit of cardboard doesn't even exist anymore because when you look at the cards, they don't even seem to have the little pieces of cardboard where you can see that it's been punched out like the perforation thing. They don't really have those anymore. But I think that was the reason that they didn't want the mess in the shops. But if you want unpunched cards, you tend to have to get the exclusives like the Yak Face. And I think the ones coming in the Razor Crest have been confirmed that they will be unpunched. But anything that goes to retail, it'll always be punched. Joseph Guarneri. I think that's how you pronounce your name, mate. I'm sorry. Uh, for next week, what's your favourite figure from the Revenge of the Sith line? Uh, it's a difficult one. There's some decent figures in that line. I think it's got to be the, uh, the, the Clone Commander's. Sorry, Bosk. Uh, yeah, I think it's got to be the clone commanders. Uh, I, I love I love this clone. You know, you've got the Bly as well. I had him on last week's video. So these ones are great molds. I, I think they're really nice. And for, 
you know, when those figures were released, what was that, 2005, you know, with the articulation and everything that these got, I think it was a really step forward in figure production and whatever. So good paint work on them and everything. They look pretty cool. So yeah, I'd probably say the, the clone commanders. All right, then let's pause from the questions a little bit now to see who's won the giveaway. All right, so let's pick the winner of the giveaway. So this is for the Black Series Mandalorian Beskar armor figure. And I have the URL for the video where you all entered your comments. And I'm going to use this random comment generator. So if we just scroll down here, what you do is you just bung the URL of the video into there. Filter out duplicate users so that only one comment is included for each person. And I'm not going to include replies in case I've replied to any of your comments or whatever, so then I won't be in there. And let's get the comments and see how many people have entered. So we have 319 single comments, which means you have a 1 in 319 chance of winning the figure. Now, I did mention that I will be posting this internationally. So if you are international, you can be in the US, Australia, it really doesn't matter. I'm happy to post it anywhere. So let's pick the winner by clicking the start button and see who the winner is. Vincent Spencieri, I think that's how you pronounce that. Thanks for continuously posting new and entertaining reviews. Congrats on hitting 12K. Well, congratulations to you, Vincent, for winning the competition. Uh, you can contact me on email, tim at boskbounty.com, or you can hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. Entirely up to you, but just give me a contact and we'll sort out the delivery of the figure. So congratulations and... Unlucky everybody else, but of course there will be more giveaways in the future as I hit other milestones on my YouTube journey. Joe Uriah says, question for next week. Do you think we'll ever get a vintage collection, a Sarge Ventress? I'd like to know your thoughts. Thanks for the content and what you do for the Star Wars community. Cheers. So thank you, Joe. Uh, it's difficult to say with a Sarge Ventress. I know there was like a mini campaign on Instagram recently about Siths, you know, what Sith characters you want. I think Dooku won it by Country Mile, obviously, because we need Dooku really badly. But um, I think Asajj Ventress was definitely in my voting. I put Dooku, Asajj Ventress, and the Emperor from Return of the Jedi, 100%. Those three were in my list. And yeah, I think it's one of those ones that, you know, it's coming in the Black Series, so it's definitely on the minds of Hasbro. But as we know, we don't always get the same figures in both lines, but it's definitely a needed figure, 100%. George Aitken says, with Hasbro releasing what are essentially walls and corridors, do you think they can't be bothered bringing out new vehicles? Uh, I wouldn't say that they haven't brought out new vehicles. I mean, we had Poe's X-Wing. We've had the um, Imperial Tank. We've had the Troop Transport. We had the ATST Raider. So they, ha they have brought out vehicles, of course, not as many as that I would like. And I've got nothing against the the corridor i think it looks great and i think on a shelf that'll look awesome with a little diorama going on i think i've said this before that that corridor that they're producing is something that diorama makers have tried to make over the years for their setups and dioramas and whatever and you know people have always said why can't hasbro make something like that and then as soon as they do people moan about it so i find that a bit weird to be honest i think it's a good set i didn't like the um Carbon freezing chamber set, everybody knows I didn't like that, but I quite like the corridor. I think it's a cool thing to do. I don't think it's overpriced. I think it's reasonable. So, but yeah, with the vehicles, of course, we always want more vehicles, new vehicles, uh, but I don't think that they haven't brought any out. You know, there's three or four that I've mentioned there that they have. Dean Birch says, question, have you ever gone to a convention and met any Star Wars actors and got their autograph? I was fortunate to meet and got autographs from David Prowse, Kenny Baker, Peter Mayhew, Warwick Davis, and Jeremy Bullock. Well, you are very lucky because you've got some pretty good ones there. Um, I haven't really got any of those names on my list, I must admit. I have met Anthony Daniels, who plays C-3PO, and I did get his autograph, and I did have my photo taken with him. If I can find that photo on my computer somewhere, I will try and post it up on this video right now. If I don't, then you won't see it, but I have got his autograph. I also met Mike Edmonds recently at one of the Echo Lives. He played Low Grey and I got um, a comic, a John Tyler Christopher comic set signed by 
Mike Edmonds, so that's pretty awesome. And the lady that played Forlom or Zuckus, and I, I'm terribly sorry, I can't remember her name right at this moment, but I got her autograph as well. Um, so maybe not some A-listers like you've got there, but I've met a few people. Okay then guys, that's it for this week's episode. Don't forget to leave your questions for next week's episode in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching as per usual. Thank you for all the support you've given me. There's a big thumbs up from me. Thumbs up the video and we shall see you on the next one.